Señor Presidente, Excelencias, gracias por destacar la importancia de la diplomacia preventiva. La prevención no siempre recibe la atención que merece. Quizá se deba a que es difícil medir los resultados que se derivan de impedir un conflicto, prevenir una guerra o evitar de antemano el sufrimiento de miles de personas. Tenemos reporteros, reporteros de guerra, pero no hay reporteros de paz. Pero la prevención es absolutamente vital para una paz duradera. La presentación es el objetivo último de la labor de este Consejo y de sus resoluciones para ayudar a los países a forjar la paz y la estabilidad y resolver sus disputas antes que se conviertan en conflictos armados. Y el papel de la Corte es aquí esencial. Y la prevención es la razón misma de la existencia de las Naciones Unidas. Esta organización nació de las cenizas de la Segunda Guerra Mundial con la intención recogida en nuestra carta de no volver a someter a la humanidad a la inhumanidad de la guerra. Excellencies, for 76 years, the United Nations system has given the world a home for dialogue and tools and mechanisms for the peaceful settlement of disputes. From judicial dimension of prevention provided by the International Court of Justice to the Economic and Social Council, which works to address conflict and advancing sustainable development, to the twin resolutions adopted by the General Assembly and the Security Council in 2016, which reminded us once again that prevention must be at the heart of our collective goals of building and sustaining peace. To the women and men of this organization who are working every day to forge, build, and maintain peace in some of the most difficult and dangerous places on earth. Prevention is essential. That is why I placed my agenda of prevention at the center of my mandates for my first and second terms as Secretary General. I called for a surge in diplomacy for peace to ensure that political solutions remain the first and primary option to settle disputes. And this includes reviews of all of the tools that comprise the UN's peace architecture and the better integration of prevention and risk assessment across UN decision making. It includes more innovation and more foresight, including a much more robust system of regional monthly risk reviews, senior decision making and stronger support to member states in managing and addressing crisis risks. And includes connecting the dots among all of the drivers of conflict, including poverty, inequalities and climate change. Because history has shown that the conflicts do not emerge out of thin hair nor are they inevitable. Too often, they are the result of gaps that are ignored or not properly addressed. Gaps in access to basic necessities, like food, water, social services, and medicine. Gaps in security or governance systems, where aggrieved groups can coalesce and find the best way to power by force. Gaps in trust in governments, in institutions, and laws, and in one another. Gaps in tolerance and social cohesion rooted in discrimination, prejudice, and grievances old and new. Or gaps in equality between rich and poor, among and within countries, and between men and women. All of these gaps are potential flashpoints for violence and even conflict. Excellencies, prevention is ultimately the business of stopping wars and conflicts before they happen or diffusing through dialogue the tensions that spark division and war that put millions of lives in danger every day. But prevention is also the business of making sure that no mother has to skip a meal to feed her children, of bringing hope for a better future through education, health care, and the possibility of income, of fostering tolerance, trust, equality, and respect for human rights, all the ingredients of a peaceful society, of closing the development gaps that lead to conflict and bringing the promise of the Sustainable Development Goals to life for all people equally. Of reversing the vicious cycle of conflict and division and instead setting in motion a virtual cycle of development and peace. And diplomacy has a vital role to play in carrying this virtuous cycle forward. My report on our common agenda proposes a new agenda for peace that takes a comprehensive, holistic view of global security. 
one that not only includes efforts to consolidate peace, build resilience in fragile contexts and avert conflict relapse, but also one that recognizes the importance of sustainable development to prevent violence and conflicts from happening in the first place. For the women and men of the United Nations, preventive diplomacy and development go hand in hand. There is no separation. Excellencies, we know that preventive diplomacy works. I have consistently used my good offices, sometimes publicly, sometimes behind the scenes, to seek to defuse conflicts and advance peace. From border disputes to constitutional and electoral crises and fragile peace talks, we can point to example after example where our regional offices, special envoys, special political missions and peacekeeping operations are working around the clock and around the world. A central part of our prevention strategy is working with regional and sub-regional organizations from the African Union to sub-regional organizations throughout Africa to the European Union and ASEAN and beyond. These organizations are vital voices of peace and play a key role in promoting confidence building and dialogue as we work to prevent and resolve conflicts. Our work together with our partners to help prepare for and ensure peaceful elections is another critical part of our preventive efforts, including past elections in Madagascar, DRC, Dakar, Malawi, Zambia, and San Tome and Principe. In Somalia, we have joined forces with the African Union and the European Union to work with parties to prevent the escalation of tensions in the midst of a fraught election. And in Libya, we are working closely with the transitional authorities to ensure that the ceasefire holds and that the country seizes this moment for peace in the lead up to next month's elections. Beyond elections, our regional center for preventive diplomacy for Central Asia is bringing the region's governments together to jointly develop common approaches to share water resources and counterterrorism. In Mali, together with the economic community of West African states and partners, we are supporting the political transition to ensure a peaceful and timely return to constitutional order, sometimes against all odds. In the Great Lakes region, my special envoy is focused on building mutual confidence and trust between countries and leaders. The Special Coordinator for Development in the Sahel is working shoulder to shoulder with all entities to build peace and support people in that sub-region. And the Peace Building Commission is supporting the peace process in Papua New Guinea and peace programming in South Sudan. And in the context of COVID-19, our resident coordinators and country teams are supporting the response to the pandemic while also serving people's needs in the midst of humanitarian emergencies from Haiti to Yemen and Myanmar. Excellencies, while we are proud of our work, we also know that we must do far more to join up our humanitarian peace and development efforts. My report on our common agenda calls for a new social contract within all societies, anchored in human rights and focused on accelerating progress towards the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This means urgent investments in universal health coverage, social protection and education, and of course, COVID-19 vaccines for all. It means ending to work inequalities that deny entire groups of people access to civil and economic life and the levers of decision making. It means finally ensuring that we balance the scales of power and participation equally for women. And it means transforming our commitment to human rights from words to practice in every context. And this is also an essential element to preventing crises. But it also means strengthening all the tools of preventive diplomacy for the future as proposed in the Agenda for Peace. This means stronger early warning systems and strategic foresight tools, including better data and analytics, so we can develop a shared understanding of threats to detect and avoid looming crises. It means stronger mediation capacities, the front lines of our diplomatic efforts to build peace in communities around the world. It means expanding the pool of women leaders to serve as envoys or mediation specialists, just as we have increased the number of women peacekeepers and women leading our field missions. And it means more joint work across the United Nations family, including the Peace Building Commission, to bring the, together system-wide expertise through regular reports and dialogue. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs les Représentants, la prévention n'est pas un outil politique, mais une voie réaliste vers la paix. 
pour que la diplomatie préventive et le, et le développement contribuent à la paix à laquelle nous aspirons tous, nous avons besoin du soutien total de ce Conseil et même de tous les États membres. Nous avons connu trop d'occasions manquées en matière de prévention à cause de la méfiance entre États membres sur leurs motivations respectives. C'est compréhensible. Nous vivons dans un monde où les rapports de force ont toujours été déséquilibrés, un monde où règne la pratique du deux poids, deux mesures et où les principes sont appliqués de manière sélective et injuste. Un monde où la prospérité et le développement sont inégalement répartis. Un monde où des groupes entiers ont été laissés de côté par la pauvreté et la discrimination. Une paix durable exige un travail constant avec les dirigeants, les communautés et tous les partenaires afin de construire la stabilité que seul le développement inclusif peut apporter. Voici le message que j'adresse à ce Conseil. Soyez à nos côtés pour construire la paix par le dialogue et la collaboration. C'est la seule solution viable pour bâtir notre avenir commun et je vous remercie.